Got it. Yeah. So I am thrilled to be chatting to Jenny Bevan uh, this morning, uh, who has won three Oscars for Best Costume Design uh, for the films uh, Room with a View, Mad Max Fury Road, and most recently, Cruella. Um, Jenny, thank you so much for chatting to me today. And a huge well done for your most recent Oscar. What a film. Thank you. Thank you. Really amazing. Um, there was just so many costumes. It must have been a serious challenge to have to make so many. It, it was indeed a serious challenge. Um, in fact, when I was first approached, um, I'd, I was very surprised because in my mind, it had always actually been someone else's film. And I understood that she couldn't do it for various ske scheduling reasons and also thought there wasn't enough time. Well, when I read the script and met the director, I totally agreed with her. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, I, I sort of, I kind of want to say no. And then I thought about it and then, an amazing supervisor said she was available and the supervisor is the person in costume who really brings the team and can get all the people together, obviously with some consultation, but you know, um, that's the job and they run the budget and they do all the logistics. And Claire said she was up for it. So I thought, well, let's give it a go. And at that time, we literally had 10 weeks. Now, in film, you don't do everything for day one. It's in schedule order. So if you've got a 12-week shooting schedule, you may not need something. So you've got the 10 weeks plus almost 12 weeks. But in this case, an awful lot came up front um, because yeah. for various reasons. And uh, anyway, um, we, we set off at a breakneck speed. And then Emma Stone managed to break, I think, her collarbone. She's just oh. slipped and it actually gave us another six weeks and she was mortified and I was thrilled <laughs> as long as she wasn't in too much pain which thank god she wasn't um but it needed all that time to heal properly oh well that's so, so every cloud has a silver lining I Indeed, guess in this case, it absolutely did yes <laughs> um and can you tell me a bit about your journey to becoming um a costume designer oscar winner well yes i mean basically i sort of fell in love with theater at a very early age i had a grandfather who um loved shakespeare and would give us sixpence if we could tell him where a quote came from and then decided he was the man to take me to uh, my first shakespeare which was dorothy tootin in twelfth night at the old witch theater i think and i just loved every minute of it. I was only about 10. I just thought it was brilliant. I knew somewhere along the line I wanted, that's what I wanted to do. But my mother, who was very alternative, had sent me to a music and movement class where I met a boy called Nick Young. His parents were um, very wealthy and very generous and loved the idea of having me and my sister along for Nick and his sister Sarah because it made their lives easier to have you know other children there but equally i mean we went skiing we went skating we rode horses we went to this extraordinary country house they owned and just had the most amazing time which we would hill and i my sister and i would never have had because our parents were very poor classical musicians it was not a well-paid profession in those days even though they were in top orchestras um so through that link through nick who ended up on the South Bank show as a commissioning editor and had got to know Merchant Ivory en route and had introduced me to them. Nick actually um, commissioned a film from them and asked me to help Dame Peggy Ashcroft, who was um, playing a major role in it, to get the wardrobe of clothes together. So I did. And we got on very well. And on my, I think, third visit to her house to with the you know, clothes and going through her wardrobe might no money involved. I mean, I couldn't, you know, it was all what we could rustle up between us. She said she, she'd never been to India before. She was a little worried and they had given her a first class ticket. If she changed it for two economies, would I go with her? And I'm actually wow. very glad I did because when we landed in Delhi, 
in I guess the early 70s. It was not Indira Gandhi International Airport. It was a very humble affair with sort of, my memory is sort of camels on the runway, but or elephants, but <laughs> probably not. But it was, you know, um, it was very wow. basic. I was glad to be there to look after her, and that was my introduction. I ended up in Jodhpur with Dim Peggy. I did everything from cr crowd collecting, any costumes that needed doing, helping with props, and acting in it. So I just oh, joined brilliant. the American Diary family, and that's how the costume side took over because I'd actually studied theatre design, set design at the Central School of Art. Um, and that's what I thought I was going to do. Yes. From my grandfather's introduction to Shakespeare, I just wanted to be in theatre. It didn't occur to me about film. We never went to films when I was little, really. Right. We went to the theatre and concerts a lot. But um, so suddenly the theatre design went out the window and film yes. costume design came in, as happens in life. Yes, you know. absolutely. How brilliant. Um, and can you sort of talk me through the the process of designing and making costumes how long does it take from i mean i'm sure it varies but from beginning to end what is the process well you're right to say it varies absolutely mm. horses for courses so yeah i mean it's just extraordinary how very very different each job is one moment you're just doing it purely out of a tent on location and the next minute you're in a big studio like shepparton so the normal thing is you get a script and you read it and if you like it you get a meeting with the director of the director and you get on and you get the job then you take the script and you do what's called breaking it down so you take each character and give make a list for them uh, you can do it all on the computer now but I still tend to do all my stuff by hand because it gets it better into my brain yeah. and you make a list of what each character will need uh, logistically uh, if they fall in water, if they ride a horse, if they do certain things, they will need a stunt double. You maybe realise you're running two units, so you'll need, you know, twice the number so you can have a double, whatever. And while you're doing that, normally, actually, when I first read a script, I get an image in my head. Sometimes I don't, and I have to start re really researching and looking into what, where this character comes from. And you have your list. From, from all these notes you've taken. And then you um, also probably at the same time are researching, and of course the internet is a wonderful tool for that. You used to go to the V&A, get all the books out, you know, that took all day and look up stuff. And that was a, a good way of doing it, but now it's, I'm afraid, you know, just click, click, click with us. Super quick. Yeah. <laughs> Super quick. Um, and printing stuff out and making mood boards. I tend not to draw because I think that's two-dimensional. Actors are three-dimensional and actors bring their own body language. And I think a drawing is a very nice thing to put on a wall that has little to do with uh, the real art of it comes in the fitting. So yes. out of the research, I do mood boards, even if it's modern, you know, I'll see what next or Oh, it used to be Top Man or Top Shop. Um, top Shop. You know, I didn't look around at the moment because I'm sort of out of the loop and I've only done period things recently. Um, so I'll do the mood boards and go, if it's period, probably to Cosprop, Costume House, start actually looking at real clothes, even though they're on the rack, put them on a mannequin, you know, really see what's there and build up. I call it a notebook of actual clothes I may try on at a fitting, so my racks start to have the character names on them. Uh, if it's earlier than, I mean, something like Alexander, where you there's nothing in a costume house, uh, there may be some armour, but, you know, normally you're going to make a lot of that. I will again start hopefully making prototypes with a, a workshop. Um, so I've got something to try on people. And it's totally um, on something like Corella, set in the 70s, a period I remember extremely well. Mm -hmm. We went to the costume houses in LA, in Europe, it is pre COVID, yeah. and of course, important to pull an enormous amount of stock of the 70s for the extras, for the um, yes. 
because obviously you can't make all of that. And anyway, there's some really fun stuff you'd never think of. You wouldn't want to make that. You can mm -hmm. find wonderful pieces. Yes. Although, of course, in the 70s, we were much smaller. We didn't have all the fast food and we weren't greedy like we are now. So <laughs> a lot of the clothes are very skinny, mm -hmm. um, but still wonderful. And, you know, you, you just try and find people to fit them. Yeah. At the same time, on Corella, we set up a huge work shop at Shepperton Studios. I had, I think, four cutters there. And then I had the cutter who made the Baroness, all of Emma Thompson stuff, is in Worthing. She's someone I've worked with a lot, Jane Law. Uh, but at, at Shepperton, we had Kirsten Fletcher, Don Young, Ian Wallace, and Jeff Slack. Um, all of whom had very different skills. So we had them prototyping, you know, possible stuff. Um, I was at Portobello every Friday. Yeah. Wonderful stuff still in Portobello. Looking in vintage stores also in Brook Lane. In Los Angeles, I know a lot of the vintage stores. So finding really amazing pieces. And then the big um, Warner Brothers and Disney and all these people have great costume stores, which have good 70s. So it's just wow. to connect it from uh, all over and not just me. I mean, I set the tone and then loads of other people are out there um, and, sourcing and finding. And, and how many um, people do you generally have in your team? I mean, do you, when you go from film to film, do you take a team with you or do you get, you know, do not you get really. I think what happens in England is I try and get Claire or I have another wonderful Marco Scotti and they have teams and so I know their teams. Right. Um, and, and they all have teams of tremendous um, clever people. Mm. In Claire's team on Corella, Joe Kobolevsky sort of runs the, um, all the extras, the crowd. Yeah. Um, so he's really in charge of sending out, again, more people to find stuff. On Corella, we, we were big. I mean, it must have been a good 60 people. Yeah. Plus extra people outside of that. But mainly, I think our main team was probably around about 60. Wow. And luckily, mainly in one place at Shepparton. So at least I could go around and do the rounds every day. Whereas, yes. you know, with Jane, I had to make a special trip down to Worthing. Um, yeah, but then we did more do different. that. Yeah. It just makes it more difficult. So if you can have everyone in one place, as I yes. have at the moment on Fury Road, um, on, sorry, Fury Esa, but it's... Um, yeah, yeah it, I can it, imagine it's a bit easier. Huge. Uh, and um, which film would you say you found most challenging um, to date? Probably the one I'm doing at the moment, Fury <laughs> Because it's um, a sequel or a prequel, so there's an expectation. Yes. I think if I was asked to do another Cruella, I would find that phenomenally hard mm -hmm. because there's an expectation. Yeah. Um, the first one, you almost sort of, you get away with because you're so new and, and it's all sort of, um, you're really trying so hard to make sure it's right and everything. And the second one, you're still trying hard, but it's yes. just... You and know, I guess particular characters, it's just really hard. And I guess the pressure as well to make it as brilliant as the as the first one is enormous. Indeed. There there is a lot of, of that. I hope it was brilliant, but you know, there's a lot of cosplay goes on, but yes. I mean certainly with Corella. And they're all desperate on a Mad Max film. They can't wait to see what you're doing and then make it, which yes. is tremendous. Um, you know flattering in one way but terrible pressure <laughs> yeah no I can imagine huge pressure um, and do you find you spend you you can spend a lot of time and energy designing a costume then to be told actually sorry it's got to be changed or you know last yes. minute Yes, I, on some films and with certain directors that happens and with others, um, I mean, it's, it's just, again, each director is so different. Some are really interested in the look and, you know, it's not they don't want to be mean or anything. It's just that it's probably developed in their mind yes. because they will have seen the fitting 
either been there or had the photograph sent to them and we'll have discussed it, we'll have had this costume on the stand. Um, but, you know, some of them and others just love the fact I'm doing it and they don't have to think about it and they yeah. concentrate in different areas. It's it's very, all very different. I'm sure. But they always see what they're getting well ahead of time. Yes, yeah. And, and, and what do you find most um, stressful about your job? Is there a stage you find particularly stressful? Probably all of it, actually. Yes, I'm thinking about quite a lot of it, Panda. Quite a <laughs> lot of it. Um, but I think, I think that bit, you know, when things do get changed slightly last minute is fairly stressful because I'm not the maker. And, and you've got to then tell the maker that it's got to be changed, yeah. you know. And, and so you see their sort of faces crumple because they put their all into whatever it is. And um, I, yeah. I'd also sometimes it's really hard to think of your you read a script and then the director sort of tells you something about it that doesn't kind of fit and mm. you're trying to think up something and then the actor you get you get an idea that the actor um is a bit worried about you know and you're just trying to put all these things together and and make it work yeah it's not like doing a painting or doing a fa or fashion i mean fashion is just all about the clothes and yeah they're always worn by these stupid skinny models and do this mm -hmm. ridiculous sort of bendy yeah. walk and that's it Whereas yeah. what we're doing is making stories and supporting mm. the actor to, and telling stories with the clothes. So yes, it's um, yeah, exactly. very, very different. Um, and and um, your job obviously takes you to some amazing places. Um, you're in Australia um, at the moment um, uh, filming, uh, so the follow up to Mad Max Fury Road. Is that is that right? How long do you think you'll be out out there for? I think at the moment it looks like we're going on September, possibly October. I don't know if they'll truly need me that long. I mean, you never you never really know, because there might be a moment when we've established everything, and um, you know, I can I can maybe come away early. Or that's always a funny feeling because you still you know you still got your crew and and yes. you still. But so we'll, we'll see how it how it goes. I think there's a limit on the number of days I'm allowed to stay here, and I've already been here since the beginning of February. So, um, you know that there is some kind of limit, and you need another visa, or you have to learn, leave the country and come back, or all that yes, stuff. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's not it's, straight this forward. is a long one. This yeah. is definitely a yeah. long one. Um, and um, what other interesting places, areas has uh, has this your career um, taken you to? Well, the last, I mean, Fury Road was in Namibia, a place I would never have gone without a film. And that was absolutely fascinating. And also for months, um, a, a most extraordinary country. You'd really feel the birthplace of man, as I believe you do in, in the outback in Australia, but I haven't yet been out of Sydney or Melbourne. No. Um, but we are going, I think we're supposed to shoot in Broken Hill. So that would be really interesting. That will be really um, interesting. But so Namibia is probably the most extraordinary place. And then just recently I've been back in Prague, um, which is a city I absolutely love. And before that, Budapest, which I didn't know and I didn't really get a chance to see it because it was locked down. But we oh, could work, but you know, you couldn't really go roaming around. Um, Berlin is somewhere I'm incredibly fond of. I think it's a wonderful, exciting yes. um city to work in and, and to be in so mm -hmm. i'm just lucky to have been so many places but namibia without a doubt is the most extraordinary yeah and and do you get much time to go and you know um sightsee or discover um, i mean i should think you're flat out aren't you yes um we're much more these days they're much keener that we do stick to a five-day week and mm -hmm. and sometimes six, but on the bigger films, it tends to be a five day week because they get into a massive overtime bill if, if they oh, right. longer. And the hours each day are quite long, but but so we do get weekends. Um, I find normally in, in Namibia, I managed to get down to Sosa's Flay, which is an incredible area um, of sand dunes and where they're petrified, millions of year old petrified forests. 
And then I got up to Etosha, the wonderful wildlife um, uh, game reserve, yes. which was very, very special. How wonderful. And of course, the locations we were, you know, going into the caverns and the um, canyons and the different parts, sort of within a hundred kilometres of our our base, which was Swakopmund on the on the coast of Namibia. So just on the locations, and often like in Budapest, you go into houses no one else is going to go into. No, slightly fallen pieces, but with amazing stucco work or iron work or yes. some beautiful floor or. You know, I Prague. guess we're seeing a lot anyway, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember in, in Paris, um, we were flying on um, Jefferson in Paris. It was the first one of the first Montgolfier balloons, and there we were all standing on the roof at Versailles, where this thing sort of went up and down. And you thought, <laughs> hang on, I'm standing on the roof in Versailles. Yes. Watching a Montgolfier yes. <laughs> on a on a lead so it didn't escape, go up and down. And you thought, this is crazy. Yeah, absolutely yeah. crazy. How amazing. Um, and Jenny, can you um, just talk us through a sort of typical day when you're working on a film? Well, you have I mean, two I know different, but... prep days and you have filming days. And on a filming day, if there's some, I, I don't always go out on a filming day. If they're in continuity, they're doing the same stuff. There's no need for me to be there hanging around, getting in the way. If there's a new costume or there's something that might be a problem or something happens, I absolutely go. So I will be there probably for the first call, which could be 5.36 in the morning. So I've then got to get there. So that means, you know, you get up at some silly o'clock and, and on a big film, I will be driven. But on a small film, or like the one I'm doing at the moment, I've got my own car because actually I'm not driving very far and it's lovely to have the car weekends and, you know, just feel a bit freer. Yes, yeah. Um, and I'm sure it saves them a fortune, but mm. I, I'm happier driving. But on a, like Cruella, I would be picked up by my driver, taken out to Shepparton, and then go straight to the base camp where um, the costume truck is, uh, we normally seem to work out of trucks and trailers these days, even in a studio. Um, they'll set up a sort of camp, we call it. Um, and then the artists all have their own trailers, which stay the same wherever they are on location or whether they're at studio. So it's like a home for, for them. Mm. And just sort of hang around and make sure everyone's fine. Yes. Maybe go to my office, <coughs> which it will be in the building at, at the studio and, and do some work. but. I'll be there for them and then go on to the set when all the actors go to set, make sure they're fine. If there is a problem, try and sort it out. Yes. Because after all, my job is the one to talk to the director or, you know, mm. be the frontman um, for anything. And then if, if all is well, um, depending on where we are, I'll go back to my office and continue or my workroom and, and continue. Yeah. My yeah. prep day, um, here we do a 7 a.m. to 5.30 day. So I have to leave the house by 6.30 because it's actually only half an hour drive to work. Yeah. Um, and then just, it's wonderful PA. It brings me a delicious cup of coffee. And um, off we go. And it's a sort of, mainly here, my associate designer, Lauren, is brilliant. She goes and sort of runs around the whole team to make sure everybody knows what they're doing and, 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 everything's fine but a lot of covid problems here oh, yes. again the people i mean they're not that ill but they're often mm. you know we're down people so it's how do we sort of make the work um you know, so frustrating at times it, it is i mean i have had it yet, i think but i'm really you know i'm really careful but who knows no vaccinated i you know done everything i'm supposed yes. to do but yeah it doesn't seem to make any difference no it doesn't it really doesn't <laughs> I mean, does it <laughs> well i'm sure you get it less badly yes, but no, I, no. I think it's less severe definitely yeah. you, but still doesn't but then, stop you getting it I think. so the day then sort of continues with a keeping an eye on what's actually happening and people in and out showing you stuff maybe fittings um people coming in for fitting uh trying on the clothes mm. and also just continuously designing whatever needs still designing or having ideas or you yes. know why do we try this you know yeah. um George doesn't like something well maybe if we tried this he'd like you know whatever um yeah so it's wow. just a good old it's busy busy it's busy. 
busy, busy. Yeah. And and do you, do you ever get um, an actor or actress who <laughs> tries something on and goes, I am not wearing that? Uh, or happened are they very rarely? It has happened in the deep past. Uh, it has okay. happened. Um, yeah. But we got through it and it was fine. Um, yeah you know actually ended up really good friends um but these days like it's much less likely to happen and i'm much better at not getting into that situation yes um because it is teamwork it's not me telling them what to wear it's actually this is what i thought of as the character and yes i mean the great thing is when they come and they look at a line of clothes on the rack ready to try on you know Sometimes they go, oh, God, that's ex exactly what I thought of for the colours or the whatever. Mm. And sometimes there's a problem because they're playing a character in something else and I've accidentally gone too close to it, which, you know, you yeah. can do. Um, yeah. Or there might be a problem because of mobility that they can't actually wear certain things that you hadn't known about. Yes, I yes. Know. I can't think of what it is, but, yeah, you know, but yeah. bad feet. And boy, do I sympathise, you know, yeah. the amount of actors with, you know, feet that just need TLC and yes. special shoes and the soft yeah. and art supports and what have you, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, no, but no it, yeah, it's not too, um, too and, bad these days. And, um, would you say, okay, so so which film have you, do you think, found most rewarding to design for? Cruella must have been pretty rewarding. Cruella was phenomenally <laughs> rewarding. Uh, but, um, and um, Fury Road. Yes. And in a funny way, things like The Remains of the Day, because it's such a perfect film. It's not... Um, showy in closed terms but i think john and i did a that's when i was working with john bright a lot um and john and i just hit it kind of right and it it just things like that give me a lot of pleasure and i can watch them and sense and sensibility yes. you know not a yeah. lot of big period one again because of everything about it the performances the casting ang lee's direction it just sort of comes together as yeah. something we can really so they're as satisfying as the really tricky design showy design things yes it, you know, there's lots of them out there really yeah. but yeah no i bet um and you must spend a lot of time with the actors and actresses do you sort of become friends with them and with all oh hopefully actors? yes um yeah. not not i i don't socialize much with them um I mean, probably too tired. Absolutely <laughs> exhausted. I do remember we did Cranford um, many years ago, and we started in Bath, and it was incredibly hard. It was on a ridiculously small budget, mm. and done at the very last minute. And we were all in Bath and staying at the Francis Hotel, and all the ladies would be in the bar, and you had to kind of circumnavigate the bar to get to your bedroom. And I, I know. Those were the days when, of course, you didn't have a driver, you know, drove everywhere. I remember sort of having to go start the day in Bath, go back to London for something, come back to Bath. And I came back one night with my friend Stephen Miles, who's made loads of the clothes on the films I've done. And we crept in and it was, Jen, Jen, come on, come and have a drink, come and have a oh, drink. No. <laughs> you know, how can you not go and have a drink no. with Judy Dench, Eileen Atkins, Imelda Staunton, um, Francesca Annis, I mean, you just can't. So okay. you end up um, just having the most marvellous time. And of course, I feel like death warmed up the next morning. Yes, but, hey, tricky. <laughs> why yeah. not? Hey, hey, got to yeah. push so on. When I do them, I absolutely adore them, but I don't tend to socialise. No. I'm, I'm not very sociable anyhow. I'm terrible at just sticking on my own and puddling about. Well, it's nice to have some peace in the evening after a it's hectic gosh, day. You know what, well, absolutely. <laughs> I, I just love um, spending time on my own. It's, it's quite frightening, really. <laughs> well, um, do you have, Jenny, a sort of film genre or franchise that's on your bucket list that you would love to do costume design for? No, I've been asked that quite recently, actually, and I can and say no I haven't um I'm always fascinated by what may come next I have certain directors I love working with 
Um, yes. One of them may have a project coming up in the autumn. And I've kind of said I'm not going to work for a bit, but you know what? In mm. the end, it's such fun. Um, yes. Particularly with a particular director, but there's nothing set. But um, no. uh, it may or may not happen. Um, no, I, I was incredibly impressed by the film Drive My Car for the Oscars. I wouldn't particularly want to do it, but I, I thought that was totally wonderful film um and i could have watched it over and over yes as with coda i think it's more the um films that um grab me which i hadn't even thought about i, I you mm -hmm. know i've never thought about a film like drive my car or coda no. um until i saw them and then actually had i been asked to do them i'd have been probably very pleased but one's yes. japanese and the other's american um but no, that, I don't think, honestly, I can say that. No, no. Uh, and all... and um, so you're working on the follow-up to Mad Max. Can you tell us a little bit about the film and, and who's in it or not? Not really. I'm not allowed to say I think I signed an NDA. And I got oh, okay, fair enough. Something completely inadvertently. I was doing an interview for a totally different film, mm. um, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, which will come out in July, I think. And oh, brilliant. Person just asked me a question, and I just gave what I thought was a very straightforward, non-committal answer. And it's mm. bloody picked up in variety, and it's like, no, you know, that's really oh, unfair. God. Actually, um, it's definitely not the film I was being interviewed about. No, and no. Okay, I should have just enough. said no. Um, so I'm saying no now. No, I'm fine. Done. That's absolutely fine. Well, we Sorry. very look forward to, um, very much look forward to um, seeing it when it when it yeah. comes out. Um, so, I mean, I must just say to all the members, um, if you haven't seen Cruella, it is a phenomenal film. Um, and the costumes are completely out of this world. Um, and please buy it on Amazon um, with the bonus content, because that is actually equally, well, it's so fascinating. Mm. Um, and Jenny is interviewed um, about the costumes and you just get a real insight into the making of the film. Um, the level of artistry is just mind blowing. Um, oh, Jenny, I can't thank you enough. Oh, you were well, brilliant lovely. to chat. Um, and very, very good luck with your time in Australia and the creating of the costumes for Mad Max follow-up. Absolutely. Well, it is, it is challenging, I will say. But again, on Corella, I had the most phenomenal team of, you know, um, cutters and makers and yes. fitters and what have you. And on this, I feel I've got exactly the same, the Australian version, and really talented, clever people yeah. who I bless on a daily basis. So it does make getting into work quite fun um oh no i'm sure i'm sure you know. well we're very excited um to see the um finished the finished uh, film um i've got to just say that garbage dress umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness i mean unbelievable well unbelievable it, funnily enough it wasn't that difficult i mean the the Bodice and all that bit's beautifully done by Kirsten Fletcher, who's in fact Australian and does yes. wonderful creative work for something called the World of Wearable Art, which is a competition okay. in New Zealand, which encourages the most extraordinary makers, well worth looking up. Um, and Kirsten did that, but the actual um, tale of it was, we just found everything. It was supposed to be the Baroness's 1967 spring collection, but I yeah. don't think that ever ended up in the final edit, but that was the reason for the sort of pastel colours, because yes. it was a spring collection. Yeah. So we got hold of anything, you know, from um, charity shops and a lot of sort of prom dresses and stuff, um, plus fabric, plus newspaper, which we actually printed, because real newspaper doesn't hold up very well. No, we need no. Anything. So we printed it on paper silk, uh, which, you know, looks well enough like, like it. And then we, if you've seen my Instagram, you will see that we did a trial run of it in the um, workroom with one of the makers. Oh, I'll have a look. Wearing it. As she walks across and we're going, yeah, that, that'll work. Um, um, how brilliant. But, you know, it, 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 I think they may have added 
some um, fans to make it sort of whoosh whoosh as she yes. goes off because I think it had a tendency to just pull along the floor yeah you know actually it was a really fun one God, oh, it was amazing fun one. absolutely amazing oh thank you so much Jenny well, it's a pleasure, and uh, good day to you all. Good day. Australian <laughs> accent yet? I thought I'd have picked it up by now, but I haven't. But anyway. Oh, you will. Well, you will. Well, to talk to you, and we must see more of you. And I'm back. Definitely.